the American standard of living is dramatically deteriorating right before our eyes. But authorities and policymakers insist we shouldn't worry about inflation because they have everything under control. But if we take a quick look at the situation of our country at the moment, it gets incredibly hard to believe in what they're saying. The value of the US dollar is steadily dropping, while the price of goods and services is soaring. And of course, wages aren't keeping up with the latest price increases. It seems like we have been facing hardships for so long that many of us have grown accustomed to the financial pain caused by the current economic recession. Sadly, Americans are getting used to having the cost of living rise at a much faster pace than their paychecks do, and most of them don't realize just yet that 12 months ago, a drastic paradigm shift had begun. Countless experts have been warning that we are entering an era of a Weimar-like hyperinflation, and the current monetary policies will notably accelerate the debasement of our currency as our money supply continues to grow at an exponential rate. This is becoming a major national crisis that no one seems to be talking about. Needless to say, our leaders are definitely not properly addressing this matter. So, we must brace ourselves for the biggest decline in living conditions in all US history because at this stage, there's no turning back. That's what we're going to expose today. So stay with us. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up, share this video, subscribe to our channel to keep updated with the next chapters of the US economic collapse. As we mentioned in previous videos, from the founding of our nation until 2020, our money supply totaled about $4 trillion. But after the burst of the health crisis to this day, the federal government managed to increase that sum to a shocking $18 trillion. Some call it economic malpractice. Others say it was a necessary evil. But the truth is that letting our country fall into this trap is utter, complete madness. Every dollar added to the system downgrades the value of an already existing dollar, and with the coming $1.9 trillion that just passed the House and the Senate, we are all gonna literally pay the price of such imprudent monetary policies. Inflation is already exploding in several sectors of our economy. Over the past several weeks, many of us could already notice that the price of gasoline is skyrocketing across many states. According to AAA, gas prices have been surging at the pumps, hitting a national average of $2.77 a gallon as of Monday, which is 39 cents more expensive than the same time in 2020. Gas buddy analyst Patrick DeHaan predicted that drivers would see a national average of $3 as early as April. DeHaan explained that the more states reopen, the more people get vaccinated, the more demand for gas will likely increase. I think you can see some of the very higher demands that we would have anticipated this summer. If that happens, that could bring with it even higher gas prices, he highlighted. Many people are starting to get worried about this situation, but the Federal Reserve insists that this is absolutely normal. It appears that the new normal includes absurd price increases all across the economy. The scenario described by DeHaan is exactly what happens in an inflationary environment. As more money is pumped into the system, Consumers pour huge amounts of money into certain goods, but neither supply nor the pace of manufacturing is able to meet the heightened demand. Therefore, prices shoot extraordinarily up and simply do not return to previous levels, even after inventory levels rebound. More concerningly, 
we can already observe that food inflation is now a reality. Over the past year, the price of agricultural commodities traded on the global stage has climbed up by 50% according to economists at Rabobank. The company's senior commodity analyst, Charles Clack, stressed that the higher prices will be around for some time to come. He mentioned that two of the factors that have been sending food prices to unprecedented levels are the natural phenomenon La Nina, which has been disrupting farming conditions, but most importantly, the steep collapse of the US dollar. He says, we don't expect the US dollar to strengthen anytime soon, and we expect La Nina will continue to cause drier conditions in the Northern Hemisphere while global demand will stay strong, Clack said. The bank's report also outlines how the weakening US currency is lifting the price of wheat, corn, soy, sugar, and a range of other commodities. Additionally, a recent Zero Hedge article reported that the Food and Agriculture Organization's Food Price Index surged for a ninth consecutive month in February, reaching levels last seen July 2014, led by sugar and vegetable oils. The index averaged 116 points for the month of February versus 113.2 in January. Don't be mistaken. Global trading prices never fail to reflect on our regular grocery shopping. Despite the commonly repeated fallacy that once the economy returns to normal, things will stabilize. It is the very reopening of the economy that will trigger the inflationary blow-up the Fed has been fueling. Once Americans start resuming their usual spending patterns, more money than ever will flow into the economy, creating price bubbles in every segment and every industry. This unwelcoming food inflation has caught the attention of Sark Jan's Albert Edwards, who has already sounded the alarm, saying this could result in growing social instabilities all over the world, as increasing food prices are quickly outpacing incomes. Edwards argues that we must take into account how the unprecedented amount of money printed by governments and their respective central banks have flooded the world with liquidity, making the point that those expansive monetary policies, especially the ones enacted by the Federal Reserve, will likely result in a tidal wave of food inflation, just as it occurred back in 2011. He added that the last time global food prices hit similar levels, global food riots emerged, and we should stay alert for developing social instabilities as food becomes a lot more expensive in a relatively short period of time. At least the price of food is not rising as fast as the price of lumber. NAHB released a report of standard estimates of lumber used to build the average home found that lumber prices have increased more than 180% since last spring, and this price spike has caused the price of an average new single-family home to soar by $24,386 since the same time last year. While the market value of the average new multifamily home has soared by $8,998 over the same period due to the hike in lumber prices, Random lengths illustrated that the price of framing lumber is now at more than $975 per thousand board feet, which explains the 180% increase observed since last April when the price was about $350 per thousand board feet. In face of this staggering price surge, we cannot deny that inflation is quickly spreading all over the system. More and more Americans are being forced to put their plans to build a home on hold in face of those ridiculously high prices. In one year, we entered in an affordable housing crisis and a massive housing price bubble. The dream of becoming a homeowner is more distant than ever for increasingly more people, as our money, our personal wealth, and our savings are rapidly losing value and approaching the point of no return. 
Most workers' paychecks have been affected by the current recession, as hour cuts and remote working arrangements have enabled companies to significantly chop wages. So how are we supposed to come back to normal if every day it passes it gets harder for workers to afford to live in this country? Underemployed and unemployed Americans are falling out of the middle class by the millions. Jobless claims continue to escalate up, but authorities that are warning of hyperinflation just have wild imaginations. Last week, an additional 712,000 Americans filed new claims for unemployment benefits just in one week, and recent reports say weekly jobless claims have remained stubbornly high for months, hovering around four times the typical pre-virus outbreak level. Even though this figure is well below the peak of almost 7 million claims registered after stay-at-home orders were first issued a year ago, there are over 10 million fewer jobs than there were in last February before the sanitary outbreak began. According to Alicia Levitz, the unemployment insurance team lead at U.S. Digital Response, a nonprofit that has advised states on their benefit systems, there are fundamental flaws in the system that may jeopardize the country's ability to respond more effectively to the next downturn. States are barely limping along from crisis to crisis and there's no way they can rebuild to address the next crisis, she stated. This definitely is not what an economic recovery looks like. The trillions added to our money supply eventually have to go somewhere. We have been warned time and time again that once we had crossed the line and allowed a money-printing frenzy, we would be falling into a hyperinflationary trap we would not be able to exit. Our economy is now broken, and the only way to keep things from continuously collapsing is by printing, borrowing, and spending money endlessly. The coming fiscal relief package will undoubtedly aggravate the inflation crisis. If you watched any of our previous stock market videos, then you probably know that this is the investor's biggest fear. And this could be the trigger event that will pop the numerous bubbles formed ever since we turned on the magic money printer back in 2020. As prices explode to sky highs, life turns increasingly more difficult for most Americans. If our income does not rise as fast as prices are surging, our standard of living will sharply collapse. That's basic logic. The vast majority of Americans have already experienced a dramatic shift in the standard of living over the past 12 months, with over 8 million people falling into poverty. And all this printing, borrowing, and spending will send many more to the brink of financial ruin as our dollars become worthless paper. Since we continue to deliberately destroy the value of our currency, soon enough, other nations will start to realize that a collective shift to a different reserve currency is necessary. Once the United States dollar loses its sovereign position as the world's reserve currency, there will never be any going back to the good old days. It's just sad to say that we have never been closer to an economic endgame than we are right now. And the term collapse is not nearly strong enough to describe what is coming next. If you have found this video enlightening, you will probably enjoy Michael Snyder's latest book, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America. It's now available on Amazon. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section down below for all to share. And don't forget to turn on the bell to always get our latest notifications. From us all, thank you for watching.